welcome. This is the second of four videos dedicated to vibrato in the Mozart Bassoon Concerto. In the prior video, we reviewed historical materials and concluded that during Mozart's time, the application of consistent vibrato was not typical. In this video, I will present an overview of the body components or mechanisms by which vibrato can be produced. First, I want to recommend publications on vibrato by Professor Jan Eberly of Michigan State University in the USA. She provided two presentations at International Double Reed Society conferences in 2005 and 2006 and published an important article on the subject. International Double Reed Society members can view her presentation on video at this link. Her article is available to IDRS members at this link. In the presentations and article, Professor Eberly notes that there are nine ways to produce vibrato on the modern oboe. All of these methods also apply to the bassoon. Please note that the flatament or finger vibrato presented in the last video is not listed here. In this video, I will use figures presented in my monograph, Wind Performer's Guide to Increasing Endurance, to illustrate Professor Eberly's types of vibrato. I will retain the same figure numbers as in the publication. Hand vibrato indicates shaking the instrument in order to create vibrato. This is a technique employed by many trumpet performers. However, it is not recommended for double reed players. Jaw vibrato requires the movement of the mandible. Moving the jaw in rapid chewing motions will alter the tone with vibrato. This vibrato is employed by several bassoonists. However, it produces a wide variation in the pitch of notes. I do not recommend this vibrato. Professor Eberly indicates that tongue vibrato occurs in the region of the tongue near the soft palate. Saying yo 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 rapidly approximates this tongue vibrato. I do not recommend this type of vibrato. The tongue already has enough to do with articulation and tuning by means of vowels. The next type of vibrato is incorrectly labeled by Professor Eberly. The diaphragm is a muscle that brings air into the lungs and physically it cannot be employed for vibrato. Instead, this vibrato should be labeled abdominal or thoracic. This vibrato is created with quick pulsings of the abdominal and intercostal muscles, which force air out of the lungs. Many wind players are told that this is the only and correct means by which to produce vibrato. The problem with this type of vibrato is that it is quite slow. Before we move on, let's examine the five components that are employed for tone production or articulation. We have the lungs and associated muscles. The throat area the back of the tongue near the soft palate, the front of the tongue, and the jaw. With the exception of the front of the tongue, Eberly indicates that all of these may be employed for vibrato. She and I agree, however, that it is best to use mechanisms for vibrato that are independent of the other demands of performance. The lungs and associated muscles need to be employed for dynamics. The back of the tongue for tuning or double tonguing. And the jaw and embouchure for tuning and dynamics. This leaves us with the throat area as the source for vibrato that is independent of all of the other demands of the instrument. Professor Eberly recommends using only the last five items on her list 
as an appropriate means of producing vibrato. Note that all of these vibratos are presented in the region of the throat. Eberly's insight into vibrato is that there are varied ways to use mechanisms in the region of the throat to create vibrato. This point of view has been confirmed by video fluorographic studies. My book chapter, Survey of Cinefluorographic and Video Fluorographic Research on Double Read Performers, provides an overview of X-ray motion pictures taken of performers while playing double read instruments. One of the most interesting conclusions from the studies was that professional double read performers do not make use of the same mechanisms to produce vibrato. The muscles and structures in the region of the throat are complex and varied. Vibrato is produced by one or more of the muscles. Sometimes multiple muscles produce the vibrato in tandem. The whistle vibrato is made with muscles under the chin. The sister vibrato is made in the upper throat in the lower tongue region. The sound cis is repeated. The laugh vibrato can be simulated with ha 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 sounds. It is located further down the throat. The cough vibrato is simulated with coughing sounds. It is located yet even lower in the throat. The vocal vibrato is produced in a manner done by most singers. This is the most common vibrato. This vibrato is created by fluctuation in the vocal folds. Many double reed performers are surprised to learn that most performers produce vibrato in the throat region, most often with the vocal folds. Research by Christopher Weat, Scott Poole, and their colleagues have demonstrated that this is the case. I encourage you to further study their fine research. Also, here are additional resources that you might find useful. In summary, the muscles or structures in the throat are the best region for the production of vibrato. This is confirmed by Professors Eberly, Weat, Poole, and others. The way in which the vibrato is produced in the throat, however, may differ from player to player. In the next video, we will discuss how to practice vibrato.